change that. So. All right, well, so welcome everyone, our 2111 Q&A session. Uh, I'm Donna Bachowski, I'm one of the educators here. And we also have with us uh, Sarah, who's recovering from being ill. So we're gonna try and not make her talk too much. Uh, Sarah is one of our other educators. Kelly has come back to join us also, um, helping out. And then we have a new educator with us, Katrina. Uh, Katrina, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. Um, I am relatively new to the librarian world. I just got my MLIS from the University of North Texas. And I come from a background with school libraries and public libraries. Wonderful. And today is her third day, so we were very happy to see her come back. <laughs> so, excellent. All right, well, we do have the chat open if you want to put your questions in there, um, or we are in a meeting, so you can go ahead and unmute yourself and just ask your questions there also. Uh, so have at it. What questions do you all have about the upgrades? Um, I can. Well, we had this yesterday. What questions were asked yesterday? We could always share those. Fantastic. And actually, I was just kind of looking at the list. Um, let's see. Coming right down to it. Um, really, kind of the big the big question was um, about something that we really could have used your help with, Kelly, since you're our cataloging expert. Is the change from analytics to components? Um, so how that displays. Um, so we do have a blog post on that. Um, Madge, that is a fluffy cat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, love it. <laughs> um, just see the big old fluffy tail poking up. <laughs> Um, so it was really about the components. Andrew does, uh, there is a, a, a post um, in our blogs about how those show from changing from analytics to um, to component records. Um, that was really kind of the one question that we had about that one. Um, we did just, you know, we were asked, how's it going? And Knockwood, it's going really well. Um, we have discovered one or two little things, but we are patching those so that when the full push goes to everyone, it'll be, it'll be fine. Um, um we did verify um we mentioned this in the what's new session of can you get uh local cover images to be the preferred cover image um because now you can have multiple cover images that kind of run on a carousel you are not able to designate which one goes first at this point um that is something i'm sure that lucas that i know lucas is still trying to figure out um but at this point you cannot designate which one is your preferred cover image um let's see trying to see what else we've got into that one the permission um, one is probably sorry about that yeah um we did get questions about the mark overlay this is a new new functionality that i'm sure we're going to have lots and lots of questions over um and it's really kind of a nice functionality some things to think to remember with that one is that it is um tag specific, not subfield. So I can say protect all of my 949s, but I cannot say only protect my 949 A and B. Um, so it is the entire field in there, not subfields. Um, and you cannot limit it by branch. So you can't say um, anybody at branch A um, protect these. You'd have to list those people individually um, in order to do that. So. But again, this is the kind of feedback we really want to hear as you start using that so we can file those enhancement requests in the community. This is the first time we're seeing this feature, so we want to get that uh, that feedback back to the folks that are that wrote this um, and help enhance it and make it more and more. And I know, Kelly, you had already identified a few things um, that would be helpful when you were working with Andrew on that one as far as what we'd like to see moving forward. But um, at least to start with, remember, it is basically user specific um, is kind of the best way I think would go that or patron category. So one of those two, you need to set those up. Um, and then it would be field, not subfield specific. No, but I'm looking forward to seeing folks use that. And I, I am too. I really think that it's going to be really powerful once the setup's done. And it will be useful to those um, libraries that need that extra um, you know, control in overlays and edits. It actually came up yesterday um, when I was working with the library who's working on EDI um, and they want to make sure those 949 tags are retained when they get 
-hmm. when any record is overlaid and they've got their consortium so they've got a whole bunch of people you know fingers in the pot so to speak mm -hmm. um fingers in the pie yeah fingers in the pie um so having them you know make sure that that 949 is always protected and cannot be deleted when they're importing records is going to be incredibly helpful so um Excellent. No worries, Madge. Um, uh, we've got the we can put the, we'll put the link in uh, chat for where we have everything stored. Um, one of the things that we liked about 2111 is it's kind of a I want to call it an easy upgrade. Um, there's no huge functionality change. There's no workflow changes, things like that. It is really just those little things that we really like um, that are making those little changes, those little enhancements that make our lives so much easier with that one. So it's lots of nice little features, um, but no huge workflow things. That's coming in the next ones. So everyone be prepared. This is kind of a lull. Um, and the next next couple of uh, releases, we're gonna have some big, exciting changes in those. But this one's just kind of like lots of nice little features. So, um, let's see, there is a new permission in there. And that one, this one has caused, anytime we talk about permission changes, that does cause a little bit of anxiety. Um, but there is a new permission being added that is the permission to delete borrowers. So in the past, you had one permission to add, modify, and delete borrowers. Delete has now been pulled out so that you have the permission to add and modify borrowers and then a separate permission to delete borrowers. That permission will be enabled by default. So if I have the permission now to add, edit, and delete borrowers, I will have that delete borrowers permission checked um, when we get to our new, when you get to the upgrade. So if there are people that you don't want to be able to delete borrowers, you will need to go in there and go ahead and take that permission out. Um, but that will be enabled by default. Um, the other one that we did get the, again, there's a couple of things that we know always cause anxiety, both for y'all and us when we see these things in the upgrades, um, is it changes to the account lines, um, that always makes everyone a little bit nervous. Um, but in the account lines, um, basically what it's doing is it's giving us so much more detail and so much more specifics. Um, if you are running reports that do pull, um, account line information for the, Oh, goodness. I've lost the complete word. It's like the, the credit description. That's not right. Um, we have a blog post. We'll go ahead and get that um, put in there also um, that we can share with that one. And basically what it is, is you can take a look in your reports to see if you have that specific setting. Um, and then we can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and update that report or you can let us know and we're more than happy to update it. It's not really going to break anything. Um, so you don't have to worry about it in that perspective. It's just that you're not going to get the full detail of the information for it. Um, so this is really just adding some additional logging, some more specifications when we are looking at our um, account lines. Um, And then we had a question about just in general about Elasticsearch versus Zebra. Um, so Zebra, I think, is more fun because we can make fun of when like the Zebra dies and it doesn't do things like that. Elastic, you can't. I guess the Elastic breaks. I don't know. Um, it's just not as funny. So um, but but basically what that comes down to, and, and I had a follow up question about that, which I'm like, yeah, we probably should explain this to folks. So currently in Koha, there are two ways to, to use your search engines. Um, one is, or search index, one is Zebra and one is Elasticsearch. Zebra is the one that most people are on. That is the, that has long been the standard. Um, the challenge with the Zebra search engine is that we do not have the ability to control what is relevant. It is a predefined set. And so we can't go in there and say, well, in my library, um, anything that shows up in the 245H is more important than anything that shows up in the 650A. Okay. Um, so with Zebra, you're just kind of stuck. That's your relevancy. We can't change it. With Elasticsearch, you have the complete flexibility to say, these are the important fields in my records. I want this to be weighted here, here, and here. So you can go ahead and completely control that relevancy ranking. So that's really exciting to be able to do. We are moving all of our partners over to Elastic as we go. Um, there are some, you know, there's always moving pieces, so we're not just like pushing people onto it and not talking about it, but we do have the conversations with you about moving you to Elastic. Um, if you are doing any sort of specialized searching or have specialized indexes, those are the folks that we are definitely looking at first to get moved over. 
Um, and anybody that is new to our, um, is a new partner to us since about November has been put on elastic as we go. Um, so we've got lots of folks using it. They love it. Most people don't even notice the difference. Um, and that's really the cool part. We do have a couple of blog posts about some of those changes and things like that. Um, but for most folks, they don't even notice the difference between it. But uh, yeah, so when we talk about zebra and elastic, um, that's really just kind of the search indexing. But we do love um, the flexibility for elastic. It's really kind of neat. Great, Sarah posted the account lines um, blog post. So that'll give you an example in there of what to look at in your reports. Then again, we're more than happy to um, work with you to update those reports as needed. So that was the summary from yesterday. What other questions do y'all have or concerns or thoughts or ideas or? No? Well, I will do my ad like I did yesterday. Um, Koha Con. Um, so y'all are familiar with Koha US. Um, that or hopefully you're familiar with Koha US. It is an organization of Koha users within the United States. Um, they are not all Bywater partners. There are a number of libraries that are not supported by 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 water. Um, so you've got a great mix of folks from all over the place. Um, so Koha US is a great resource. Um, they have an annual conference. And this year, um, it's September 19th through 21st. I may have the dates wrong. But what's really exciting is that it's not only going to be the Koha US conference, it's the International Koha Conference. Um, so we will have people from all over the world attending. Um, Koha Con, the International Conference, is never held on the same continent twice in a row. Um, so it will be a few years before it comes back to the United States again. Um, so it's kind of exciting to, to have it here. It is in Lawrence, Kansas, um, being hosted by a lot of the libraries out there that are on Koha. So they're going to be hosting that. Um, it's going to be really exciting. It is free to attend. If you are able to travel to Lawrence, definitely come. It's going to be a great time. If not, you can um, sign up to just view it, um, to have it streamed. It is going to be virtual also. So you do have the options to go ahead and, and view those. And they do record those sessions too. So if it's not at convenient times, you'd be able to go ahead and um, watch those later. But it really is a great opportunity to just kind of connect with the international community. Um, so like I said, we're, we're encouraging folks, if you can travel, Come and travel. I know it's not feasible for a lot of folks right now, um, but uh, it's kind of a neat thing to, to take a look at. So um, definitely take a look at that uh, Koha US um, Koha conference. There will be seven of us from Bywater in person. So if you want to come and meet the famous Kelly face to face, she'll give you an autograph. Um, she and Jay-Z will kind of be there. So our famous Monday Minutes faces um, are going to be there also. So uh, lots of fun great time to kind of just have conversations and you know how are you doing it and all of those sorts of good things well I believe Donna you are also presenting so people may want your autograph as well yeah I'm nowhere near as famous as you are <laughs> <laughs> I did have someone mistake me for Jesse one time so that was very flattering that they thought it was Jesse <laughs> <laughs> So what other, and again, you know, if y'all have questions that are not about the upgrades, that's fine too. We're happy to, to field those the best we can. Or what about a feature that you would love to see in Koha that's not there right now? We're always looking for feedback on that also. No. Kelly, what's a feature you'd like to see in Koha? I knew you were going to ask me and I was struggling to think really quickly. It was either going to be that or like, what's my like feature that I'm excited about? Like, I knew you were going to ask me. Um, um, it's a hard question. It really is. Yes. And I don't, I believe that I don't use it as much as y'all in real libraries. So my idea of what's good would probably be like, well, why do you need that, Kelly? Because we don't ever do that. I don't know. I, I think I might want more color in Koha. Can I say that? Yes, absolutely. Um, and actually that's a perfect lead in that we do have that. There is a discussion going on in the community right now about 
redoing the staff interface um, to freshen it to make it a little bit um, more in line with the times and you know the how users are using the internet and what practices we've gotten used to so there is a discussion happening in the community right now about that. Um, I will assure you that with anything like that, the Bywater team is very, very involved, um, looking out to make sure that we don't get like fuchsia with purple polka dots um, or anything like that. But um, we are watching that conversation and being, and we do have Lucas um, involved in that firsthand. I can't remember if I could find the site he shared with us uh, pretty easily, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'd have to dig for that one. He's not here today, so I can't really ping him. I did get a good question yesterday. We did get a good question yesterday, which is what's one of the features that we didn't talk about and then what's new that we were really excited about. Um, and for me, um, one of the one of my favorite functions, which I have so many of them, um, but one of my favorite functions is the article request functionality. It is only used by maybe two or three of our partners. Um, and those folks are even using it in a little bit more of a creative way than, than what um, we typically see. Um, but there has been significant work done to that article request functionality. Um, so it's really cool to see that being developed. Um, that was custom development paid for by, I believe, the Swedish libraries that are using Koha. Um, so it's really kind of cool to see that being enhanced. And I'd love to encourage folks to take a look at it and see if that's going to help you somehow um, with what you're doing. I know with like medical libraries and things like that, law libraries, it's, it is it can be really helpful. Um, but again, it is all dependent on you having that information in your record. So there's always a trade off for that one. So um, excellent. We have a question from Kim. When patrons pay for the replacement of an item, I would love to have the status changed to lost and paid for automatically. Yes. Um, so actually, y'all can be my guinea pig group here. We actually have a library asking about doing that as a development and paying for it. Um, but what we really kind of need to know is how would you envision that working? Um, you know, would it be any lost item that they paid for, or um, would there be limits on there? Would there be only if you've paid for it within a certain day or you know, certain time frame? Only certain lost statuses? Um, how do y'all envision that working? Because I we we will be doing this, um, so we're trying to gather as much feedback as we can about what's the right way to do it. Oh, Kelly, this question's for you. The item search button is now added to the home page. And that's my favorite. That's can my you, favorite. Can you explain the benefit of using the item search? How long do we have? Exactly. <laughs> oh, good grief. When you think about what the item search is, pre is doing, it's actually creating an SQL report in the background, which is unlike the advanced search. The advanced search is using either Elastic or Zebra to pull up those results. And because it's using an SQL report, it's just a different way of doing a report without doing a report. I've been using Koha for, oh my goodness, almost 10 years now. And I can remember being totally scared of SQL and to have an item search back in that day, I would have been like, this is amazing. So it gives you the opportunity to find things that are lost, withdrawn without having to write a report. You can create, item, customized item search field. So if you said, I really have a feeling we're suppressing too many items in the OPAC, let's see what we're suppressing and go through that list. So, you know, you, you can say search for the 942N equal one and see all those. They're all hyperlinked out. You can either look at it on the screen or export it. Um, you can create a barcode list from that search. So you have a lot of functionality that you just don't have in an advanced search or you don't have in that basic search, which is more for your reference librarian. I call it more like your project search when you're looking for something. Yeah. It's great for collection maintenance and collection development, mm -hmm. um, being able to create groups of items that you then want to batch modify or batch delete. It also shows you a number of checkouts it has. So it's an easy way to look at like what's circulating. Is this circulating? It's withdrawn, looking at all my withdrawn. But it did have 62 circs in the last year. What does that mean? How can I, you know, those kind of information that you really can identify. I just think it's invaluable to those project librarians. 
And that is one of the big differences. But so item search or advanced search is going to pull you back bibs, bib records. Item search is going to pull you back the individual barcodes. Um, so for instance, if you have a, I don't know, a board book collection at location B that needs to be moved to location C instead, a different library, you can do a search saying, show me everything that is the item type board book with a home library of library B, get all of those barcodes and shove those into batch item modification and say, oh, guess what? You're now all at library C instead. Um, so it does give you that batch flexibility, but something that Kelly kind of touched on real quick that I would encourage y'all to take a look at is the ability to add custom fields to that. So you can go in there and you can basically come up with any field um, that's in your records and say, I want you to be able to pull this information or look at this data when I am doing these searches. Um, there's the, the checkout functionality too. So a great way to create really quick weeding lists. Show me everything that has a publication date of 1990 to 1995, and that has less than 10 checkouts. There's my list. I'm going to go pull the stuff off the shelf. Um, so you've got a lot of flexibility being able to do that sort of thing in there. So um, yeah, Kelly really could talk about item search forever, and I can too, actually. It's just so functional. And for those of us that don't do SQL reports, um, it's just so much faster for us to be able to kind of pull those things in there. It gives us that guided um, flexibility. We have a lot of libraries that are using it now that they're using the claims return process. Um, they'll go in there and then once a week they'll say, show me everything that is a status of claims return and you get those items and you can go ahead and pull those or, or take a look for them. So, and that is exactly it, Felicia. The item search, since it's not, since it hasn't been visible, a lot of folks even forgot about it because um, it's only there if you if you go into that you know advanced search thing. So having that on the on the screen now, I think is going to really remind people this is a very very powerful tool and honestly just kind of fun to look at. Um, we use it a lot when we are migrating libraries, and we'll go through and it's like, hey, I have a an item type that's called VHS. What is that? Um, and you can go ahead and just say, show me all of those and see what that is. So it's again cleanup tools, projects. Yeah, it. It's fun. We like it. <laughs> you can get the barcode super quick. Yeah. I guess that's one. I don't know. I don't know what I'm Yeah. But yeah, so lots and lots of uses for that one. So, and we'd love to hear from y'all what you find interesting uses for it too. Um, so and that's, a, and that's kind of a common theme I would say is that we always want to hear from y'all. Tell us if you're doing something interesting or if you have a question. Um, we always say, if you're getting ready to start a project, ask us because we've probably worked with a library somewhere else that's doing that same sort of project. We can give you some guidance on how to set it up or tools that you may not know of. Um, that is one of the ongoing challenges with Koha is it is so feature rich that trying to remember everything um, is hard. I, so I've been with Bywater four and a half years and what was it, two days ago, Kelly, I was like, oh, I forgot you could do this. <laughs> So it's, you know, it's, it's hard to remember all these things unless you're using it every day. So um, definitely, you know, kind of let us know if you're, if you're tackling a project and we can kind of give you some guidance and support. Um, and a lot of times we can do some of those data updates for you too, so that you're not physically having to change everything. So always, always holler. Um, so we have Amy here. Hi, Amy. Amy is uh, one of our support leads and she's probably one of those people that would get your ticket. Um, so she's always happy to to talk with you all about projects, right? Indeed. Yeah. Um, so you can always um, call our number and we're open from, I'm in Eastern. So it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then just like, so then it's 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. in uh, Pacific and, you know, in between. And we're happy to answer your questions. You can always call, you can put in a ticket, you can email a ticket as well to support at Bywater, ticket at Bywater Solutions. No, support, I was right the first time. Gosh, darn it, <laughs> support at bywatersolutions.com. And um, we'd be happy to help. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We need like some of those professional, you know, transitions that I do. Or a green screen. That'd be kind of full. Or fun. Anyways. Any other thoughts, questions, concerns? Kelly. Thanks, Donna. I was going to sneeze, so I muted myself oh. and this never came. So um, I would recommend, you know, we appreciate you coming. We 
we appreciate your attendance and really getting ready for those upgrades in any way you feel that you can. I would encourage you if you don't have um, access to our newsletter, please let us know. We can subscribe you so you're getting all our information. We can subscribe you to our Slack channel if that's something you want to um, lurk in. You don't even have to talk, but I lurk in the Slack channel myself just to see what everyone's talking about. Somebody could put a report in there and it's invaluable to somebody else not even knowing, but they're just sharing. And that's really what the crux of the Koha community is about is sharing and, and giving that knowledge out to anybody. So we're here to give you knowledge about what's coming, but we, I know that you are all a wealth of knowledge to somebody else. And so remember that as you go forward, maybe attending Koha, you, Koha Khan is something that would be really beneficial to you or somebody in your staff um, signing up for Slack and, and getting to know other libraries specific, maybe public libraries or just getting into the report channel would really improve your um, your game in the Koha world. I think we are, could forever be challenged in what we know how to do. I know SQL is my big challenge in life and I will um, continue to excel at that. <laughs> Um, I am going to go ahead and just pop a link real quick into chat for the Koha Khan 2022. Um, so make sure you take a look at that one. So great question. Will any future update allow staff to enter a, no a note when voiding credits, um, explaining why it was voided? I believe there is a bug on that. Um, if not, I will make sure that I, file, that I do get that one filed because I know we've had that question before, but I think there is a bug on that in the community right now. Um, but we'll take a look at that one also. And this is exactly the feedback we want, you know, is let us know, you know, hey, you know, we need to be able to do this. Um, you know, I always talk to partners when we have the new libraries that are coming in. I'm like, tell us what your pain points are when you have to pull out a paper and pencil to do something or if you have to do four or five steps to do something. Tell us about that because there's got to be a better way. And that's really what we look at is how do we make it better. So when you have those little things. That's what this whole 2111 is, is those little things that are being fixed or improved. So that's kind of where these things come from. So I will definitely take a look to see if, um, to make sure that that enhancement is in the community. And if not, I will get that file for you. So great question. All right, then. I guess that's it. Thank you all for coming out this morning. Great to see everyone. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Donna.